Welcome to the Man of Recaps. It's the Man in the High Castle, Season 2. Welcome back to 1960s America, in the alternate reality where the Nazis won World War II, which, you know, sucks. Joe Blake is a nice guy, but he's been working undercover for the Nazis to get the Man in the High Castle films that show alternate realities. The Resistance is pissed at Juliana because she let him escape, and she's like, look, I believe he's a good man. Also, he's really hot. So they bring in Mean Resistance guy, who shoots her in the face! No, it was just a tranquilizer. She wakes up and meets the nerdy guy from Office space. Turns out he is the man in the high castle. He's got this barn full of all the films. He doesn't explain where they come from, but he watches all of them and uses the information to help the resistance. She's here to tell him about the film she let Joe Blake escape with, where a nuclear explosion destroys San Francisco. He's like, hey, tell me, did you see this guy in it? And she's like, yeah, actually, he was a resistance member getting shot. I kind of recognize him, but I don't know where from. He explains that in every reality where the Nazis win, eventually San Francisco gets nuked, except for the one where that guy dies wearing a Nazi uniform in an alley somewhere. He's like, if we're gonna save San Francisco, you need to find out how you know this guy. And they trank her again for now. Now, war is certainly coming. Remember, the Nazis control most of America, but the Japanese kept California. The big problem is the Nazis have the A-bomb and the Japanese don't. Until now. Last season, Trade Minister Tagomi worked with a Nazi agent to get nuclear science to the Japanese. That way they could have a nice cold war. But the Japanese general wants to build an A-bomb and use it for a sneak attack on the Nazis, which is the exact opposite of what he wanted. Trade Minister Tagomi, by the way, last season, ended up meditating himself to an alternate reality, uh, but I guess he came back. He's like, well, that was a weird dream. Anyway, Joe Blake on the boat to Mexico, but they're gonna take the film and sell it to the resistance. He's like, yo, guys, the Nazis will pay way more. So, boom, airdrop, buttload of cash, and he kind of made friends with these guys. But unfortunately, boom, it was a bomb. Back in New York, Oben Gruppenfuhrer, John Smith, like, Joe, we were never gonna pay those guys. You shouldn't feel bad. They were criminals. And Joe's like, yeah, I'm not cut out for this kind of work. I'm done. I'm gonna go back back to my nice honest job at the construction site. Juliana in the trunk of the car, mean resistance guy, is like, yo, we gotta kill her, she knows too much. And nice resistance girl's like, well, that wasn't our orders. But before they can figure it out, she busts out of the trunk, and there were some cops nearby, so it turns into a big shootout. Juliana gets away, and unfortunately, nice resistance girl gets shot and dies. Juliana makes it home, she finds the photo of her dad and his Air Force buddies. One of them is the guy in the film. Her mom's like, oh, that's George Dixon, he lives in New York now, and he's your half-sister Trudy's real father, but I ended up marrying their other best friend who thinks he's Trudy's father, so it's scandalous. Anyway, Mean Resistance Guy still wants her dead, and the Kempe Tai are looking for her because of the big shootout, so she does something drastic and runs to the Nazi embassy and defects. Now, Juliana's boyfriend, Frank Frank, is talking to the chief inspector. Uh, his best friend, Ed, confessed to the murder of the Japanese high prince because Frank was the prime suspect, but the real killer was a German assassin trying to provoke war. But the chief inspector covered that up to avoid war, so Frank's like, hey, take me instead of my friend, but it's like, yo, he already confessed this is case closed. So Frank goes to antique store owner Robert Childen, who sold him the bullets, and it's like, look, we need to find a Japanese contact to get Ed out of prison. Uh, he knows this high-powered lawyer, but he doesn't want the case. So Frank's like, hey, this uh, sitting bull necklace we sold you? Yeah, it's a fake. I made it. Turns out that lawyer works for the Yakuza, and they're like, hey, we'll continue making fake artifacts to make money for you, but I need my assistant, Ed. So the Yakuza gets the chief inspector to blame the assassination on the dead nice resistance chick, and Ed is free. So Juliana, going to the Reich, they need to make sure she's genetically pure enough. She's got the big scar from when she was hit by a bus earlier. Uh, they've talked about it a few times. It might be important later. And she's like, hey, I'm not resistance. The resistance wants to kill me because I helped your agent, Joe Blake. Can I stay here? And John Smith kind of knows that's a load of bull, but he's like, maybe she'll lead us to resistance. She can stay. In fact, I'll uh, let her be friends with my wife. And almost immediately, she's contacted by the resistance. It's in fact George Dixon. She tells him about the film and how only his death can prevent nuclear war. He's like, huh, well, that sucks. Um, In the meantime, we just want you to help spy on John Smith. John Smith has one big secret. His his son has an incurable genetic disorder, and in Nazi America, they put those people down. Doctor's like, hey, John, we're friends, but you gotta do it today, or I'm gonna report it. So he takes his son on a euthanasia fishing trip, but he just can't go through with it, so instead, he kills the doctor! Oh, he's the only one who knew about it, and makes it look like a heart failure. Meanwhile, Joe Blake, living the simple life, has a random girlfriend, but John Smith shows back up. He's like, yo, I told you I'm not working for you anymore. He's like, actually, this isn't for me. This is from your father, who's a high-ranking Nazi official. Joe's father is Reich Minister Hoy who, as far as Nazis go, is kind of a good guy. He's just an engineer and a futurist, you know? Of course, Joe hates him because he abandoned him and his mother, but his father shows him the old Lebensborn facility. That's where high-ranking Nazis were banging super hot chicks in order to perfect a master race. And he's like, Joe, you were born here. You're Lebensborn. And I didn't run out on your mother. She kidnapped you and stole you to America. I'm so sorry. In the meantime, Joe met this super hot German chick, Nicole, and they hit it off right away, but she's Lebensborn too. Wait, are we related? And she's like, lol, don't worry. This isn't Game 
Game of Thrones. So she takes him to a house party of the young Nazi elite, and they're like, hey man, all our parents are a-holes, but pretty soon we'll rule the world and we can make it a better place. By the way, wanna drop acid with us? Yeah, why not? And Joe's like, maybe I will stay here, use my father's position, and try to make the world a better place from the inside. Trade Minister Tagomi is sad about his wife and son being dead, so he meditates again, and boom, he's back in the reality where America won the war, but in this reality, his wife is divorcing him and his son hates him. He's like, man, I'm an a-hole in this reality. Turns out his daughter-in-law is Juliana Crane, what? And apparently he was disapproving because she's white and like broke the baby's mug or whatever, so he glues it back together and amends are made and he's living a happy life now. Meanwhile, Frank meets a resistance member who's this hot Japanese-American chick, and turns out he's got a real taste for freedom fighting. He uses his metalworking skills to get the explosives out of this old undetonated bomb, and then he and that girl totally do it. Meanwhile, they need to sell forgeries for the Yakuza, so they make fake Abraham Lincoln cufflinks, and this guy is not really interested, but Ed stubs in, spinning this elaborate tale of murder and mystery, and this guy's totally buying it now. They go to pay the Yakuza, but just then the Kempe Tai come and shoot the place up, what? They realize the Yakuza was informing for the Nazis. They're like, what are you two white boys doing? Get on out of here. And so these two get to keep the money and they're free of the Yakuza debt. Joe Blake's getting along with his dad, but their breakfast is rudely interrupted. Turns out old man Hitler finally kicked the bucket and Joe's dad has been chosen as the new acting chancellor. But that's not a good thing. Yo, there's gonna be a scramble for power and whoever eventually takes over is probably gonna kill him. Back in New York, Juliana's making friends with the girls, this one especially, whose husband is in charge of the TV in America. She lets slip that they're using all old footage of Hitler, so he's probably dead and they're just not telling anyone yet. Juliana takes this to the resistance and they're like, oh, that's great. On Hitler's death, we have a mass uprising scheduled. So they kidnap the girl's husband, force him to go on the air and tell everyone that Hitler's dead, and boom, mass uprisings all over America. Uh, they send in the big guns from Berlin and they're like, hey, any city with an uprising, we burn it to the ground. It's like, uh, yeah, we're not gonna do that. Uprisings in San Francisco too. The resistance is gonna use the bomb to blow up the Kempe Tai building. Frank's like, yeah, I'm your man for that. Ed and Children are gonna bail to the neutral zone and Frank's like, sorry buddy, I'm not coming on this one. So those two will have an odd couple thing there next season. So Frank drives over there, gets the car bomb set, but on his way out, he's recognized by the chief inspector. So before he can get out, boom, the bomb goes off. We don't see Frank again, maybe he's dead, but the chief inspector is a badass, he's just fine. Breaking news from Berlin, yes, Hitler is dead, but he was assassinated by the Japanese. Oh, war's coming. The German plan is to nuke the entire Japanese empire. And Joe's like, come on, dad, this can't possibly be the way. He's like, Joe, a lot of people will die, but this will be the last war, then we'll rule the world forever, lots of peace. It's like, yeah, I guess. But something doesn't sit right with John Smith. He goes to see Reinhardt, who had the failed assassination on Hitler last season. He's like, hey, Hitler's dead, and Berlin ordered your release. Turns out your faction won. So this guy's super happy, and John's like, so what, are you gonna be the new Fuhrer? And he's like, no, not me. Hell Hoisman! John's like, huh, thanks for the info. Boom, it was a trick, though, just to find out the leader of the conspiracy, but it means it's too late. Nice guy Hoisman was the conspirator behind the whole thing. Meanwhile, John Smith's son, his micro seizures are getting worse. He's like, hey, Juliana, I think something's really wrong with me. She's like, uh, you'll probably talk to your parents about this. So he tells his son about his condition, and he's like, oh, I'm a burden on the state. That's so sad. But there's surveillance everywhere, and the resistance gets the tape. They're like, Juliana, this was exactly the kind of information you were supposed to tell us about. She's like, he's just a kid. I'm not gonna let him get killed. And they're like, yeah, you're either with us or you're against us. Oh, they're gonna kill her. But she busts out of there. No one knows she's a black belt in Aikido. She escapes and finds George, who has changed and is gonna submit the tape to the authorities to bring John Smith down. She's like, he's just a kid. You're no better than the Nazis. And he's like, we'll have to be as bad as them to beat them. So he's gonna go and she makes a hard dilemma choice. Boom, shoots him. Oh, and so she's fulfilled the film prophecy. George Dixon's dead dressed as a Nazi in an alley. But how did this stop nuclear war? Well, over in the alternate reality, she's part of an anti-nuclear protest group. So they show a film about the latest hydrogen bomb tests, how awful they are. And the trade minister's like, oh, I should probably go back to my own reality and stop nuclear war there. So he takes that film and he's like, peace out, boom, reality shift. And turns out he's not the only one that can do this. His assistant actually came from the other one where his family died. Anyway, he shows the hydrogen bomb test to the chief inspector and it's like, wait, in this reality, that's on Japanese soil. We don't have that weapon. It's like, no, we don't, but we want the Germans to think we do. So chief inspector goes to New York and shows John Smith the film. And he's like, yeah, we got the big bomb. You don't want to fight us. He's like, yeah, I agree. So John Smith goes to Berlin, meets with Joe, who takes him to his father and they show the video to the German high command. But Chancellor Hoisman wants to do the war anyway, so John Smith goes to Himmler and lays out the whole conspiracy, so they go there, arrest Hoisman uh, and Joe by association. They already had a big crowd gathered for the war speech, so they make it about stopping the conspiracy instead, and they honor Obergruppenfuhrer John Smith with a big salute. Good job, you've done your country proud. But his son watching at home 
turns himself in. He's like, Ma, I gotta make my country proud too. And he's taken away to be euthanized. So sad. The man in the high castle is moving locations. He's downsizing, burning most of the films because he has them memorized. John Smith, as the resident film expert, is given access to Hitler's personal collection of Man in the High Castle films, and the Resistance gives the rest of their collection to Trade Minister Tagomi. And meanwhile, Juliana Crane hitchhiked somewhere where the Man in the High Castle is waiting for her, and he's like, congrats, you did it, you stopped nuclear war. See, turns out, Juliana, you are a main character in a lot of the films, and because you killed a good man, George Dixon, to save that kid's life, John Smith, a bad man, got to live, but that stopped nuclear war. And I've got another surprise for you, it's your dead sister Trudy, how is that possible? Well, I mean, clearly she came from another dimension where she lived, but still mind blown. And that's how season two comes to an end.